Hello everyone, I am Miss Chen. Today I will show you how to find volume in the Mathematics Extension 2 course using the two required methods, slicing and cylindrical shell. I will demonstrate these two methods using an HC question from the 2008 paper as shown here. Now this question says, let A and B be constants with A greater than B greater than zero. A torus is formed by rotating the circle given about the Y axis. So here's a diagram. The next part, the cross section at Y equals to H where H is between minus B and B is an annulus. The annulus has inner radius X1 and outer radius X2, where X1 and X2 are the root of the following given equation. Part 1, find X1 and X2 in terms of H. Part 2, find the area of the cross section at high H in terms of H. Part 3, find the volume of the torus. Okay, I'm going to first show you an animated representation of this torus. Okay, here's an animated representation of the torus that we wanted to find earlier. So we have this circle, the area of the circle is rotated about the y-axis to form the annulus. Okay. As you can see, it will form a donut shape. Okay, as you can see, we, will, we have a donut shape. This is a torus. So the first method that we will use to find the volume of this torus is by slicing. Okay, in, sli in slicing, you can see that we are taking one slice of the area and we are rotating this area about the y-axis. Um, just like every other um, volume using the slicing method, this area is taken, par this slice is taken perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Um, so when we rotate this, we will form um, a disc. Okay, let's have a look at what this looks like when we rotate it. Okay, as you can see in our diagram here, we have a disc. And to find the total volume of this torus, all we need to do is we need to add up all of this disc from the start till the end to find the entire volume. Okay, so this is what the slicing method is. Now remember, each slice is taken perpendicular to the axis of rotation, okay? Now let's look at the same volume using the cylindrical shell method. Now here we are taking one slice of the area of the cross section and we are rotating this slice about the y-axis. Now unlike the slicing method in the cylindrical shell, this slice is parallel to the axis of rotation so that when we rotate it, we will form um, a very thin cylinder. So let's have a look at what this looks like when we rotate it. Okay, as you can see, we formed a very thin cylinder and to find the entire volume for this shape, we are summing up all of these cylinders from the start to the finish to find the total volume. Now that you have seen the idea of slicing and cylindrical shell, let's, let's solve these three problems. Okay, in part one, we have to find X1 and X2 in terms of H. So what we, are, what we need to do is we need to solve the above equation to find X1 and X2. Now to solve this equation, we first need to take the square take the square root of b squared minus h squared. Now 
Okay, now we have two solutions, x equals to a plus and minus square root of b squared minus h squared. Now we know that since looking at our diagram, x1 is closer to 0 compared to x2. So x1 here, the distance is closer to 0 compared to x2, then x1 must take the shorter length, hence x1 must equal to a minus square root of b squared minus h squared. And x2 must be a plus square root of b squared minus h squared. Okay, we have finished part one. In part two, we have to find the area of the cross-section cross at high h in terms of h. Okay, now the area of the cross-section, as we've looked at the animated um, representation, it will form a disk. If you don't remember, let's go back and revisit. Okay, so we have to find the area of this disk at height h. Okay, so the area must be the area of the outer circle, subtract the area of the inner circle to find the area of the disk. So we have pi x2, which is the um, x2 squared, which is the area of the outer circle, minus pi x1 squared, which is the area of the inner circle to find the area of the disk. Okay, instead of doing straight substitution, what we should do here is we should simplify um, this out algebraic expression by taking pi out and notice this is difference of two squares. So we can split this into um, x2 minus x1 and x2 plus x1. Okay, hence we have when we add x2 and x1 from above, when we add them, then this ugly square root part gets cancelled out and we have a plus a, which we get 2a. Okay, when we have um, x2 minus x1, then we have this expression minus a plus square root of b squared minus h squared. So when we minus this, the a's get cancelled out, but the square root part gets double up. So we get 2 square root of b squared minus h squared. Now simplifying this expression, we have 4 pi a square root of b squared minus h squared. Okay, now this gives you the area of one very thin slice. Okay, now we are up to part three, which requires us to find the volume of the torus. Now the volume of the torus can be found by summing up all of these thin slices all the way um, from the start to finish. So from the bottom here, all the way up to the top. So the area multiply by the area of the cross section that we found in part two, multiply by delta H will give us the volume of one very thin slice. Okay, so that's the volume of one very thin slice. And to find the entire volume, we need to take the limit as delta h approach zero, summing this up from h equals to minus b to b.
And then this expression is equ it's equivalent to the following line. Integral of minus b to b, 4 pi a, square root of b squared minus h squared, delta uh, dh. Now to solve this integral, let's first, let's first take out the constants 4 pi a. And the remaining um, integral is the area of a semicircle with radius b. So instead of solving this integral, we can just find the area of a semicircle with radius b, which is pi b squared divided by 2. OK, simplifying this line, we get 2 pi squared a b squared. And this is the volume of the torus.